economy and status damage of idolatry to a nation. So idolatry isn't only affecting you on a personal level. Idolatry is destroying an economy. It's damaging an economy. And you are going to learn it today. You are also going to learn how to destroy idolatry in the high places. In fact, the biggest goal of the Intercessors Regional Summits, and I believe that we have reached our assignment if I can get 365 people or more to commit to a prayer and fasting. If you can commit a one day of full fast, and then we have 365 people who will do the same, it will create, it will create a wreckage and a foundation of idolatry in this country. Help me in this area, because the wreckage of idolatry in this country is not only going to help us, it is going to help our personal economy and the economy of the nation, and it will be a powerful testimony for the rest of the nations of the world that Philippines has accomplished something big. We will get the respect. It is time to save global. Tell your neighbor, save global. Even though you're living in a shack, still think global. Tell your neighbor, still think global. Glory to God. That is really the purpose of Intercessors Regional Summit. I am going to help you to think global, not just local. We are going to learn from world history what are the events and movements that destroyed idolatry. So we will not be the first that will see this. There are already movements that have destroyed idolatry. We are going to learn that. I am going to bring your understanding today that I am going to encourage you to a level of discontent that it is not enough that you will just become a believer. Don't just settle for a fire insurance. What I'm trying to say is this. You receive Jesus. You repent of your sin. You know you're not going to go to hell. So that's fire insurance. I am going to bring you to a level of discontent where you will desire more. That you would like to become a blessing to the body of Christ in this country, to Asia, and to the rest of the nations of the world. You are going to... You are, we are, I'm going to encourage you that you will become a part as we set up a 365 days of intercessory prayer and fasting to break the destruction of idolatry in the Philippines. Let's make this a serious goal. Let this be a serious mission. Like I have mentioned this morning, if idolatry does not crash after one year, we are going to do it again and we will recruit more people until we can recruit the entire nation. Amen. <laughs> if we can recruit other believers in some other parts of the world, we will do it. Because we know that, 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 that the greater is the fervency in prayer, the more that we are going to see results. Let's go here. I am going to show to you a very interesting dynamics. Can you see here at this side? Okay. I am going to show to you a very interesting dynamics. Here is idolatry, the center of demonic strongholds in this country. Idolatry is not a stronghold by itself. Idolatry gives birth to necromancy. I'm going to explain later what is necromancy. That's why this morning is very important for us to have this line because you will be introduced to new terms that you do not know. Idolatry gives birth to superstitious belief or in short superstitions. Idolatry gives birth to divination. Idolatry gives birth to paganism. Everybody say paganism. Amen. Idolatry gives birth to shame and disgrace. Idolatry gives birth to poverty. So the problem of idolatry is not just the idol or the grieving image, but what comes out of idolatry. What is being birthed by the practice of idolatry. We are going to expose all of this because at the end of the day, 
My aim is for you to understand that the plan of God is better and greater than the idols that you are holding in your hands. Amen. Amen. I'm going to give you an example. One of the most common superstitious beliefs that I have heard in Islam is this. You can't. You can sweep your house during the night. Yeah. Because they said blessings are going to depart. Okay? One thing that I would like to tell you, my blessing does not depart. Either I sweep my house day or night or midnight. The blessing of God stays in me. Because you know what? I believe in God. And I have the favor of the Lord. Yeah. So if you believe that your blessing is changing because of a matter of sweeping, we need to change that. Those are superstition. If you hang on to those beliefs, if any promise of God is being taught to you, it competes with the word of truth. So it fights in your mind. You do not want to move in the area of beliefs because you are hanging on to the superstition. The truth is being introduced to you, but because you were so taught by the world, you are still hanging on to the belief system that was given to you by your parents or by your neighbors. That's why superstitious belief is very dangerous. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, it mentions there, you know, the East. Everybody say, that's us. Are you sure? The East, say with me, that's us. You are not from the West. West is America. You have the Middle East. You have the Far East. You have the South East. We are at the Far East. The Bible said in, in Isaiah chapter 2, the East is full of superstition. That's in Isaiah chapter 2. However, next in line to that, the Bible also says that their land is full of gold and silver. In the same chapter, God mentioned the problem of the East that is full of superstitious beliefs. But at the same time, the land is full of gold and silver. If God planted so much gold and silver in the land, that's the word of God in Isaiah chapter 2. So why is it that we are not tapping into the gold? Yes. Because your superstitious belief is forming your conviction. Not what the Word of God is talking. That's the danger of superstition. Let me give you the definition of necromancy. Necromancy is calling the spirit of the dead. Everybody say, yuck. If you will call the spirit of your grandfather, that died several years ago, you are a necromancer. You are a witch. Yeah. 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 If you will call Bible personalities and characters in the book of Mark, Luke and John, going to the Acts of the book of Revelation, those are real people. They are faithful to God. They love Jesus. They went to heaven. But you call John the Baptist and you throw waters during June because you believe about the practice. You are not facing an idol. There is no graven image in front of you. You don't pray anymore. But I am telling you, the lifestyle of the necromancer is still in you. You are still into witchcraft. You have said, oh, I have burned my idols a long time ago. But then during, what is it, June 4th? June 12th? 24th. June 24th, you were also there trying to be thrown with those waters. You participate in the celebration of necromancy. Wow. Rabbi Yasika Tom, is that news to you? Yes. Here's another thing. Very common, very popular. My illustration with the necromancy in the first illustration, you know what, this one is bigger, this is more popular. You are not into idolatry anymore. You are not calling any grieving any image anymore. But, you know what, it's February too. It's the feast in Harlow. 
Candelaria. Candelaria has a birthday. It's the fish and arrow. You are not into idolatry anymore. You are not calling them anymore, but you could not resist eating the food. Yes. Not only you can't resist eating the food because you don't want to be left out in the crowd, you also try to cook spaghetti. And I'm telling you this, you are still into necromancy. And you ever wonder why your prayers are not going anywhere? You can be calling to Jesus and be a necromancer. That's why there are so many casualties of believers in the Philippines. You know why? They are into witchcraft without knowing it because it is already packaged as part of the culture. And here's the worst thing. Your birthday is the same day that there was a Candelaria celebration. And your justification is that this is not my fault, this is Haro's fault. I was born to this day. My parents choose to give birth to me this day. You know, a piece of advice, this is mentoring now. You celebrate your birthday the day before February 2 or after February 2. I am telling you, you will still grow a year older. <laughs> you need to understand the spirit realm. Once you celebrate your birthday on the same day that there was an idolatrous feast, in the mind of the devil, you are celebrating the idolatrous feast, not your birthday. Even with all your sincerity, even with all your good attention, this is the spirit realm, brethren. The enemy will look at the entire land. Everyone is celebrating. It's like, no, 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 not me. I, it's my birthday. Hello? Forget about it. In the eyes of the devil, you are celebrating with the rest of the community. Amen. Amen. So put your birthday celebration the day before or the day after. And during the day of your birthday, you fast and pray for the deliverance of everyone that is involved in eating those food at the altar. Idolatrous feast is participating in food sacrifices given to the enemy. Even though there was no prayer, pray to Candelaria. You were only invited in the spirit realm. You are a participant. And beware of those people that will give you the food because they have prepared so many during the feast. Those foods were defined. So you're going to tell them thank you, but no thanks. I appreciate your generosity, your thoughtfulness in remembering me. But I'm telling you what, I'm not going to eat food and deprive myself of my breakthrough in prayer. I have been wondering this. I said, why is it that so many little, so little are really getting a powerful breakthrough in prayer? Because you are so part of the culture that defies you and you thought you are okay. What is the difference of necromancy to idolatry? Idolatry is here. There is a graven image in front of you. Either it's a picture or it can be a sculpted, sculpted object. Or it's a mannequin that was dressed to look like the original person. And they put a color. Some of them are white, some of them are red, and some of them are black. That's idolatry. When you worship graven image. Okay? Now, you want to do the prophetic anointing. At the same time holding on to your idolatry. So here's what you do. You don't call anymore looking at the graven images. So you think you're wise. But you have not fully renounced your idolatry. I'm telling you this. If you give away your idols, but in your mind, you are still asking Mary for help. You are still asking your ancestors for help. In your mind, you are talking about Mary. Not only you are still in idolatry, but you are still in necromancy. You are not only an idolater, but you are still a witch. This is, this is very scary, people. I don't want to terrify you. Can I get out of here telling you the truth? I was invited to speak in a Nigerian community and I told the Nigerian community, can you handle truth in this congregation? They said, yes. Can I get out of this place alive by telling the truth? They said, yes. You know, the culture is different. They introduce a dance that is very sensual and men are lusting to them. 
And I told them there is a spirit of lust and sexuality in your dads. You should stop it before all these men will commit fornication and adultery to you. I'm telling you, I'm not nice. I don't know why you love me. I just tell you the truth. I'm not that nice. There are nice other nicer prophetic people. You can go to them. They will make give you message that will itch your ears. When you go to our events, you will hear the truth. I'm not going to hold back and listen to you. You know why? I want to see your economic situation improve. Yes. Listen to this. Iloilo said the Philippines and the rest of Filipinos and other Asians that are here today. Idolatry is a death of purpose. Get that in your spirit. Amen. I'll say that again. Idolatry is a death of purpose. Whatever plan, whatever assignment, whatever blessing and purpose God has in your life that is gone if you choose to worship idols. Because God does not communicate through an idol. God is a spirit. Get rid of the idolatry, get rid of the necromancy, and talk to the spirit God. Hallelujah. I don't change. We're familiar with this. To our Catholic brethren, I love all of you. Nothing personal. I just want to see you free. Yeah. I, I want you to know God. Yeah. God is such a beautiful person. You don't need all the millions of idols. Amen. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. There's only one God and one mediator. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, say with me, that's my man. That's my man. The Lord Jesus Christ. He's your man. He's your God. The son of man, the son of God. No husband, you have a man. The Lord, no boyfriend, you have a man. The Lord, no lover, you have a man. The Lord, no money, you have a man. that the spirit of tolerance will come to you 
you and eventually you can't refuse a deeper dimension of magic that is being introduced. Magic people is business. They make money through illusions. Have, have you ever thought of that? That we pay to be deceived. Because magic is an illusion. There's no reality to it. So you went to a show, you pay to be deceived. You won't even give that money to the offering baskets. Even though you got healed of your lupus. But you will pay to watch a magic show. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> Paganism is like politism. It's the worship of many gods. Here is the danger of idolatry. If you call many saints that were spirit-filled, anointed saints from the Bible, my favorite is Peter. Who's your favorite? Paul. Paul? Okay. Here is the concept of Paganism. Because you would like to say to it that you get the anointing of all the disciples. So you worship Paul, you worship Peter, you worship Mary, you worship John the Baptist, you worship St. John, St. James. You get all of them thinking that you will get their anointing and help you out. That's another way of looking at it. That's paganism. You call so many gods. Again, there's only one man. Say it again. One man. One man. Paganism and idolatry, they're married to each other. Yes. And did you ever wonder why, why there is so much homosexuality in the Philippines? The host of your noontime show is gay. Yes. When you go to the stretch of Brujas Boulevard, all the waiters are gay. Mm -hmm. And then you forgot you.
you have a long hair. Someone took care of your hair. That's gay. And so you realize you need some manicure and another day. Did you ever ask yourself why there is so much homosexual in the Philippines? Any homosexual here, I love you, but I don't include your homosexuality. <laughs> Let's get rid of the homosexuality. We will deliver you today. Amen. The Bible said in Romans 1, verse 21 to 23, that because we give up being grateful to God, we end up worshiping images. And the result of those images are inordinate affections. Say with me, inordinate affections. Inordinate affections is what throw people into homosexuality. So in reality, idolatry also gives birth to inordinate affections. Think about it. Observing the ancient pagan ritual of honoring the dead with altars or tables and you surround it with flowers, food, and pictures. Guilty? You do it at the graveyard. You do it during All Souls Day. You love your husband. You put picture, you put food and flowers. Paganism! Go, oh, I'm telling you, after we're done, you will be purified. You know what? You're like a fish that all your scales will be gone. You will be so good to it. Ramagaya Sika. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 20, the combination of false teaching. Actually, the problem that we are facing today is not even false teaching, it's the lack of good teaching. It's not for stitching. Anyone in the body of Christ that believes in Jesus and the authenticity of the Bible, they will tell you that idolatry is bad. So it's not because of false teaching, it's the lack of good teaching. It's the lack of good anointed teaching that will hit home, that will help you get rid of your idolatry. So the combination of this, plus sexual immorality, of homosexuality, fornication, and adultery. You have two children from, from you know, mistresses. You know, you love hitting women. You love hitting men. You are into pornography. You are into masturbation. All of this, the combination of false teaching, the combination of, of sexual immorality, and the food being sacrificed to demons. The Bible said, Revelation 2.20, the bed of suffering is not going to live you and your family. Amen. That doesn't sound nice. So you were wondering why we're suffering as a people. Because paganism is there. Sexual immorality is there. Plus the lack of a good teaching. Suffering on a personal level. Suffering on an economic level. Suffering on a national level. Our condition is not improving. And look at this. The Bible said it will result to the death of your children before their time. If you have all of these three put into the mix, there is always a premature death in the family. No one grows old. They die young. You don't have to die at the age of 65. You can live up to 100. Live a full life. There are countries in the world that don't grow beyond 35 years old. There are countries in the world that don't go beyond 32 years old. So as they land, they don't grow beyond 32 years old. They're dead by time. Places like Cambodia, their mortality rate is only up to 35 years old. We thank God in the Philippines at least our average lifespan for our people is 65. You don't have to die at the age of 65. What if God will... What if there's a prophetic word for you that your prophetic career will start at the age of 66? <laughs> you still have a full life ahead of you. I'm serious. I prophesied to an old lady at the age of 80. God healed her body through that anointed prophesying. You can prophesy healing, don't you know that? God healed her body. And in, in the prophetic word that I released to her, I said, you are going to start a career. She is 80. <laughs> See? That grace 
Mr. Prophet, she really had to raise her hope. Six months later, she came back to me. She had a new career. She became an author of a book. She became a writer. I'm telling you, it's what, what you believe in. You will believe that you can do anything at your age of 18, then you can do anything. Because that's what you believe in. I told Pastor Salmaka this morning, if you believe that you're young, you're young. Amen. I'm not going to disagree with that. Amen. It's what you believe in. Amen. She believes she's going to start a new career. She has a new career at the age of 82. She is an author. And she, she wants to write more books until, you know, Jesus will take her away. But if you are into paganism, sexual immorality, and into false teaching, the result is death before your time. And suffering is not living the, the, the family. Have you ever seen in India? Poverty is not going to live in them. You know why? Tremendous idolatry. Sickness everywhere. If you can if you can heal a person with a fever in the Philippines, try to become a missionary in India. You will heal a lot of people with fever. In the Philippines, you might say, God, I'm just an ordinary believer. I can even heal the sick. Maybe I should call my pastor is better in praying. Try to become a missionary. There you will heal a lot of people. You will be surprised of the overflow of anointing that's coming out of you. Amazing. They need it. They are promised to it. Yes. Let's go to the next one. I would like to emphasize here that in necromancy, if you keep on calling the spirits of the dead or what we call the ancestral spirits, you have a history where you ask your, you ask the dead spirits of your ancestors to help you. Help you win a lotto. Help you win buy a house or buy a car. You that is calling, you become a medium. In the Old Testament time, they kill mediums. If you are a medium in the Old Testament times, you don't have a chance to live. They'll kill you. But what, we are now living a day of grace. That even though you are a medium, no one kills you. Because God would like us to taste a dimension of grace. And God wants you to enter into that grace. In order for you to taste how good God is. Because it is, because it is the kindness of the Lord that leads us to repentance. Glory to God. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, you, the, uh, because that's why we need a clicker earlier, but let's, let's stay here. I'm going to emphasize here in Leviticus 19, verse 31. Do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out. And so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Everyone says the word unclean. Unclean. Say it again, unclean. Unclean. The other translation of that is defilements. And some other translation of that is corruption. You can, you can become a medium or necromancer or a doctor without corrupting you. You will be corrupted mentally, emotionally, and in your spirits. And get this, once you are corrupted by your idol worship, all the decisions that is coming out of you is also corrupt. If I am corrupted with idol worship, if I want to become a public official, my choices and legislation is also corrupt. When I create ordinances, it's also corrupt. Why? Where did I get that? I get that in the idol worship. That's why in the Philippines, you ever wondered why the country could have turned around because of the corrupt public official that wrote is idolatry. If idolatry is not destroyed, corruption will never go away. That corruption has been in this country for centuries. It is the spirit of the land and we need to destroy it. But how can you destroy it? You don't destroy the corruption. You destroy the practice of idolatry. Because once the righteousness of God overtakes a person, they will create righteous laws, righteous legislation that will create people that respect the law. Look at this. Leviticus 20 
verse 6. If a person turns to mediums and necromancers, warring after them, warring, the other translation is prostitution. That's not a good word. Idolatry is prostitution. So basically, when you worship an idol, your soul and your spirit is prostituting with an idol. Your soul and spirit is tied up to the idol. Here is my message to you pastors. Bring your people to cut off every soul and spirit ties to every idol that they have called to every ancestral spirits that they have conjured. And they have become a part of a fist. The soul and spirit ties needs to be broken. Why? What is the problem if we are going to go into that specific? You become a weak Christian. You know why? Part of you is still connected to the idol. That's why it's easy for you to walk away from God. It's easy for you to backslide. It's easy for you to depart from the house of God, even though the truth is being preached. Even though it's a very anointed church. It's easy. Why? You have a soul and spirit ties to the idol. How many of them? I don't know. How many did you call? They are connected to your soul and spirit. The corruption is there. Every time a message is preached, something is talking at the back of your head. Do not believe. That's the soul and spirit ties talking to you right now. It has to go away. It needs to be broken. We are going to do a prayer tonight. We are going to break that. Because you know what? Your intercession needs to have power. You want to intercede. You want to become mighty and prevailing in your intercession. But you come out there is not much conviction in your intercession. Because this, your spirit is weak. Because of the soul and spirit toys. I am telling you, the faith that heals the sick is not because there is still a soul and spirit ties with an idol. They have been purified from those things. The purity of the prophetic anointing that you have read, we have purified ourselves from the corruption of idolatry. You know what is the problem in the Philippines? Why prophetic ministry could not flourish? Because the Filipinos are corrupted with idolatry. And you know what happened when the prophetic word is released? There is a mixture of impurity. That impurity will make it false. You see prophetic people, what makes your word accurate is not the prophecy, but how much you have purified yourself from the soul and spirit eyes brought in by idolatry. In just our walk with the Lord, in just a regular walk with the Lord, I have my own maintenance prayer just to get rid of any defilement that the United States could have been given to me, even though I did not sin deliberately. But the atmosphere can give to you. When I go to a country, what can they give to you that you can pick up when you are in that country? This is the problem. That's why so many prophetic words could not be fulfilled because of the impurity of idolatry. It's a big deal. And you know what has happened? We prophesy and the result to divide the church. <laughs> the impurity is dividing it. You need to be purified from this. Shara Bagaya Sikata. Are you still following me? Good food or bad food? Okay. Because you need this. We are raising you up to become effective intercessors. Effective prophetic communities. But if idolatry is not cut off, much of your prophesying will not come to pass. It will not come to pass. Because so much of the corruption of soul and spirit ties is coming out of your prophetic word. We need to purify you.
you know, even in my walk with the Lord. You know, I love to teach you in this level for you to know that we are not just preaching. We are walking what we're teaching you. Even in my walk with the Lord, I even had to make an inventory of forging my own family tree up to the 15th generation down the line. Just confessing the sins of the fathers. You know why? I prophesy so much. When I prophesy, so much is coming out of me. The gift of prophecy is coming out. If you are not purged in this area, part of you, the sin of your ancestors is also coming out from you. <laughs> Get that? Prophetic people, if you don't practice a life of holiness and purity, you have the gift of prophecy is coming out. In our level of prophetic work, we, we prophesy sometimes like 30, sometimes 120 people in one hour and a half. If you are not walking an anointing of holiness, you will run out of words. And what will come out is what? The, the sin and the iniquity of your fathers coming out of your mouth. And this is where you hurt people. This is where you offend people. This is where you, you tear them down. You know why? You are prophetic, but you are not just pure. I told the pastors in Manila, it is beautiful to receive a prophetic ministry from ministers who already live a life of healing and freedom from every defilement coming out of impurities. The problem that the prophetic community did not soar in the Philippines, they are wounded people. Yes. The prophetic people are wounded people and they, no one mentored them to walk in purity and in holiness. Get this in your spirit. If you are a prophetic minister and you have a bastard son or daughter, when you were an unbeliever, you had sex, you committed fornication, your boyfriend did not marry you, you had a bastard son or daughter. Prophetic people, did you manage to cut off the bastard spirit in your son or your daughter? Let's see how clean is your life. Hallelujah. This is not just anointing people, this is holiness. Do you see the level of increase when they prophesy? God entrusted us with the increase because of the level of holiness that we carry. I have to cry out to the Lord and I said to God, Lord, do not allow my mouth to be open in front of people if there is still a drop of sin left by my ancestors inside of me. I don't want to give any sin to anyone. level of prophetic accuracy that God will give you is enormous if you are serious to walk in purity and in holiness. And I'm telling you there is a famine in the body of Christ to those who walk in holiness. People want sex. People want sexuality. They could not give up their pornography. They like to steal. They like to lie. My God, prophetic people, you could not lie even in Saudi a humor. Don't you know that? You could not lie. Even though it's only a joke. Yes. You try to be close to me. And you give me those witchcraft humor, you're going to get a rebuke. Your spirit is still dirty. Let's deliver you. I pick up that right away. I... Do you feel the cleansing of the Lord? Yeah. Holiness 101. You know, sometimes I hear these stories, people trying to corrupt or assassinate us. Hello, let's compare our lives and let's evaluate our fruits. <laughs> I want to look at you after the blood. Everyone has a past, but let's see your life after the blood. Yes. I want to see you how you handle your money. Is there financial integrity? I want to see how you speak. Is there, is there verbal integrity? Are you consistent? Is there honesty? Is there truthfulness? How's the sex life? Marumi bang isip mo? Disqualified. You can prophesy na marumi ang isip mo. Yes. Kasi yung marumi ang isip mo, lumalabas sa prophetic word mo. You know, I joined, I joined some intercessory prayer meeting. I was bowing my head in prayer. Someone has a spirit of lust. You know what he did to me? Oh, your hair is so gorgeous. We're supposed to pray. Why are you adoring my hair? Don't touch the glory. <laughs> There's a spirit of 
lusts. You know, guys, stop lusting with your sister. You madam, focus your eyes at the right place. Don't let your eyes go down beyond the neck. You na di kita mo yung mga boobs ng iba. Don't let that eyes go beyond that and then you will prophesy because you have the gift of prophecy and I was prophesied by Eunice Bennett. <laughs> My name was Brad. You know, walk in anointing and purity. The lesson on idolatry is teaching you and helping you to value holiness. Once you reach that level, God is going to entrust you a lot of things. I am telling you, the spirit of poverty will be broken in your life on a personal level, on a family level, once you reach to walk in the anointing of holiness. God could not resist but to bless you. Amen. God is attracted, attracted with holy people. Amen. That is just the DNA of God. It is just the character of God. He is drawn to the holiness. Amen. And He will bless you once you draw God into your life. Everything that comes out from God is God. It's grace. God is going to bless you. Amen. And God is going to give you with an increased measure of revelation. And some people here would say, how did she know that? How did she know that? How did she get that? How did she get that level? Anointing of holiness. Allow, allow yourself to be purified by the Lord. If you catch yourself sometimes cursing, you have lapses once in a while. You catch yourself cursing, you need to repent to God right away. For, for Ask God for forgiveness that something came out of your mouth that you do not like. In our level of prophetic, you cannot even drink coffee. Everyone say, why? 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 Say it again, why? why? In our level of prophetic, I don't even drink coffee. I drink tea, if you notice it. I drink tea because coffee is a stimulant. Once it's a stimulant, you can stop the talk. I don't want the prophetic to be controlled by the caffeine. So I don't drink coffee, I only drink tea. You see, it's not what will come out is pure. Oh, Sharabakata. And here you are, in your religiosity, you will say, I don't like the prophetess, I don't like the way she dresses, it's very colorful. <laughs> you all see the externals, people, even if you don't like the way the person dresses, the way they talk, I'm telling you, look at the heart, don't focus on the shirt. I try to look good in front of you, it just so happens your taste doesn't fit mine. <laughs> help me with this. <laughs> we don't. That's why we would like it to be pure. And you feel that you can sense the level of purity. Yes, amen. Because of the discipline that we carry. If I watch TV, I seldom watch TV. So the prophetic word could not come up from any quotation from the world. So you could not accuse me of watching a teleserie and expect those lines coming from the teleserie. You will defile me. So I don't watch TV. And the, the shows on the TV these days, they kiss a lot. Yes. You know, I don't want to be a rose with a kissing. That will create a spirit of lust in me. So once they start to kiss, we shut off the TV. Right. The blood of Jesus on the TV. <laughs> Love it. Love the Lord. Love the anointing of holiness. You know what is great among you Filipinos? You can handle teaching like this in the United States. <laughs> After we're done with our country, they said, Oh, this is so intense. This is so intense. So they have to go to those shallow conferences. So good luck in your shallow conferences. Who wants to swim in shallow water where it's only up to your uncle? Good luck. 
this is so deep. You love these things. Amen. You don't swim on shallow waters. Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. Let's go here. The, the consequences of the combined practice of necromancy and idolatry. Remember, necromancy is calling spirits, idols, but there is no graven image in front of you. You're doing it through your hands. Idolatry, there is an actual image in front of you. The combined practice of necromancy, the Lord give us a promise that there will be a diaspora. New word, say it with me, diaspora. Diaspora. Diaspora means you will be scattered. In Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 12, is God what God wants Israel? That if you are going to do idol worship, you will become a medium, you will become a spiritist, or you will become a necromancer. Those people that brought you that, I am going to scatter them. It was Spain who brought idolatry to the Philippines. So how can the promise of God of the diaspora be fulfilled? Spain is gone a long time ago. Right. What had happened was this. Spain gave us their religious practice. Oh. And so because Spain was gone, it was not Spain that was scattered. The ones that were scattered are the ones that continued God. the religious practice of Spain. Because God said, if you are going to do this, you will be scattered. The diaspora is your prophetic destiny. That is painful. Until now, Israel is not fully back to their lands. They they become they become a Jewish state after the World War II. But until now, they have not fully come back to their land. In New York alone, there are three million Jewish people that will not return to Israel. The manifestation of the diaspora was breaking out in their land. There is an interesting parallel between the Hebrew people or the Israel and the Filipinos. Don't you know other people can give their sin to you and you are the one suffering the most of their sin? Spain didn't suffer as much as the Filipinos did. But we suffered. That's why Spain owes us an apology because they brought in idolatry to this country. Because of you, we have never learned to worship the true and the loving God. Because of you, that sin was passed on from one generation to the next. We missed out our prophetic blessing. We missed out our prophetic destiny. There was a death of purpose because you have introduced to us idolatry. Spain owes us a major apology. Let's go here. This is interesting because my message is covered because it is supposed to be one click after the other but the, the program of this computer is old and I use a newer version of, of software in the United States. So what we got, it looks like halo halo. All right, I want you to move it a little bit downwards. Okay, move it down. Because I'm going to show you something. Thank God for Lenore here, you know. She's helping us. Put it down. This is very important because I want to show to you the downward spiral of idolatry that was done in this country. Okay, you're getting there. Okay, you're getting there. One more slide. Good. The diaspora is the dispersion or the scattering of people from their original homelands. That's the definition of the diaspora. It happened to Israel. They were scattered. It also happened to the Filipinos. The first time the dispersion of the Jews had happened to them was during the 6th century BC when they were exiled in Babylon. 
That's why you have the stories of Daniel that was exiled in Babylon. You have the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that was exiled in Babylon. That was the first exile that had happened to the Jewish people in fulfillment of the promise that if you consult me, Jews and Spiritists, you are going to be scattered. Look at this. There is what I call the Filipino diaspora. Everybody say the Filipino diaspora. <laughs> there are about 8.7 to 11 million Filipinos worldwide. Everybody say that's a lot. That's a lot. 8.7 to 11 million overseas Filipinos worldwide equivalent to about 11% of the total population of the Philippines. The warning of God to scatter those that practice idolatry, necromancy, being a spiritist in Midian, happened to Israel. Filipinos duplicated it. People, if we don't learn from history, history will.